The standard amount of time people like to go out to South Africa is normally around about 10 days to two weeks. Uh, in that time, two weeks is, is plenty of time to see uh, most of the things that are really, really the highlights. When we have clients going to South Africa for the first time, whilst there's little in the way of jet lag, it's still a long flight, so we tend to recommend they would do Cape Town first, get the shopping over, out of the way, then spend some little time in the winelands, experience the wine and food, travel along the garden route, and then take a safari before flying home, because there are really early starts and long days. Normally, when people get into Cape Town, we'd like to set them up with a, with a car hire and then uh, send them off with a GPS down to the garden route. It's a really good quality road and some really beautiful places to stop in and see along the way. Uh, driving's easy, people are nice and friendly and very helpful with the directions. We get lots of interest in self-driving along the garden route. You start in Oatshorn and move further along to Neisner and finish off with your safari, visiting other little places along the way. We would recommend you keep your driving time under five hours though. South Africa is best known for its Cape and Garden Road self-drive, but there's also some lovely opportunities in KwaZulu-Natal and also going up into the northern province and in and around the Kruger National Park. Driving is on the same side of the road as the UK, parking is readily available, it's safe, um, easy to navigate and distances aren't that long. South Africa really is a destination where you can do it all. We even have fully accessible vehicles for wheelchair users, so they can go on safari too. There's a wide range of accessible accommodation which are fully wheelchair friendly as well, so it really is for everyone. There's always a good time to go to South Africa. Um, it depends on what you want to do really, whether or not you're going for the wildlife over in Kruger, in which case winter time's a really good time to go, uh, their winter, because it's cooler, uh, the animals are going to be out and about because it's drier as well, so they're looking out, they're looking for the water holes uh, to go and drink from. Whereas Cape Town can get a bit cold and a bit wet around winter time, whereas in the summertime uh, it gets really busy around December. But if you go a little bit later, early in the year, then it's still really hot, perfect weather, and uh, less busy as well, so it's easy to get the availability. Another tip when putting together an itinerary is you don't have to fly into and out of the same airport. So if you are going into Cape Town, you could then do your itinerary and then come back out of Johannesburg to save time. The perception of South Africa might be that it's quite expensive to go there. However, we feature lots of hidden gems, small guest houses where you can really get a true sense of the real South Africa and have some really yummy food. A great way to get around South Africa is to go on a luxury train ride. There are two main options, the blue train, a nice electric train, or the more classical Rovos Rail, which is a steam train. Being such a big country, South Africa has something for everyone. There's adrenaline sports, there's uh, relaxation, there's food, there's wine, uh, there's hiking, there's everything that anybody could want. Even if you're in a group where people want different things, somewhere like Cape Town just covers everything all in one place. Over the years, I've been lucky enough to visit South Africa on many, many occasions, and I really love the country, I love the people I've come into contact with, the uh, amazing safaris, the food, the wines, uh, it's just a great country, I love it.